We big, girl. We real big. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Vicky, and by the title of this video, you already know that this is gonna be a pregnancy update for the third trimester. We are almost through this entire pregnancy. It seems like I just announced that I was pregnant. Probably because I announced when I was like four months in. It does not seem like I've been pregnant for nine months. For, even for me, it's shocking that this pregnancy has went by as fast as it did. Doing pretty well for where I'm at. Um, but I am gonna be talking about some of my symptoms and some of the things that are going on with me in the third trimester. So um, I documented three other videos so far. This trimester I have been slacking on my updates. I did plan on doing at least one. So this is the one. And if I can get another one in right before I have the baby, I will try. There's only about four or five weeks left of this trimester. So that's why I'm like, I probably won't be giving y'all another update. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much time I'll have. I'm not sure how enthusiastic I'll be about making videos. The thing about planning for the future is that I have to know like the circumstances and I've never had my own child before. So I don't know how much time I'll be able to dedicate to recording content. 35 weeks, I am 35 weeks as of tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, so I'm 35 weeks as of tomorrow. They did change my due date. So everybody who's been asking me, anytime I go live on TikTok or Instagram or whatever, people are like on me. What is your due date? How far along are you? The reason why I haven't really been giving a whole bunch of updates about where I'm at and how far along I am is because my due date was wrong for like a good majority of this pregnancy. I thought that I was due in February and then like it turns out that I'm actually due in March. So that's why I've been kind of like not saying what my due date is because one, they got it wrong. So I really don't even know if due dates are accurate like that. And two, babies don't care about due dates anyway. So it really doesn't matter what my due date is because there is a, from the time I'm 37 weeks till I'm 42 weeks gap between where I could have this baby. Um, 39 is full term, but after 37 weeks, it's pretty much fair game. That's really the reality of it. And I'm not really gonna be like a specific date because what I've noticed is when other moms who are influencers or social media people tell people their due date, the due date is the day that everybody is like, scrolling through your stuff trying to figure out if you had the baby or not and then they're like well you're late you need to go ahead and have that baby now you need to get induced or oh my god where are you you haven't posted today are you okay is it like i don't want to be stressed i don't want any anxiety even though i know they're still going to ask i would rather y'all not know than the exact day then keep asking because you know the exact day and expecting me to have the baby on the exact day because that's not how babies work So this is my update, 35 weeks. It says my baby is the size of a moderately successful game of Jenga. Sport, big as a basketball net. Six pack of salsa water. Swiss chard. Uh, a plate of spaghetti, the plate of spaghetti from Lady and the Tramp. Um, I, I don't really go by these. I, the baby's big, clearly. Approximately 18 inches, 5.25 pounds. Um, is the estimate of how much baby weighs at this point. I currently weigh a whopping 155 pounds. I have never been that heavy in my life, so that's new. My hips are large and in charge. My boobs are large and in charge. I'm currently wearing a 32C bra, but I am pretty full and probably going to have to get a bigger bra for postpartum, so I'll probably have to get like a maternity bra in like a 32D, 34C. Uh, my hips are like a 37 around, so I'm like a good medium right now. This is the set that I have on right now is from Aloe. I have a little sponsorship with them on my TikTok if y'all want to check that out. But this set is from Aloe and my bottoms are a size medium. Body getting big, basically. I'm getting big. My feet are a half size bigger. I have noticed that my hands are a little more full. They're not as bony and skinty and obviously... You guys don't have to point it out. My face is definitely fat. I love my body right now. I love how full I am. I love the way my body looks. This has probably been the best part of the pregnancy for me is how my body looks. But my face, K 
can chill. I would like my face to go back. And I know everybody's gonna be like in the comments complimenting me and telling me that I still look good. That's not the point. The point is not if I still look good or not. The point is I don't like it. I know I'm still pretty, but I don't like my face. So people feel like when I say that, they have to compliment me. And I'm like, you don't have to compliment me, sis, because it's not gonna make me feel better. And it's not that I don't accept compliments, it's just I care more about how I feel about myself. And if I don't like something, I just don't like it. And I very much do not like. I have makeup on right now, so I feel like I'm a little more cute, but it's definitely giving Fiona. It's giving Fiona the ogre version. That's fine. Fiona was still a baddie. However, I don't wanna be Fiona anymore. I, I would like to be the human version of Fiona again, is what I would like to be. I'm still getting skin tags, lots of skin tags. I specific and more moles. I particularly have them on this side this time. Last time they were like mostly on this side and now they're on this side. So they just keep moving around and growing and popping off. It's just really weird. Uh, <laughs> I haven't noticed changes with my hair. A lot of people ask me if I had noticed any hair changes. I did cut my hair though, for those y'all who can tell. Um, or if you follow me on Instagram and or TikTok, you know I did just chop my hair off. Despite the fact that babies do make your hair grow, um, I did not care. I was like, I just wanna cut it. Last time I went to get my hair done, I just was feeling really spontaneous and like choosing violence. It may be dumb that I got my hair cut at the very end of my pregnancy. Like I probably should've did this a while ago so that I can really enjoy it. Cause I'm probably gonna put my hair up in some kind of protective style before I have the baby. Did I need to cut my hair? No. Did I want to? Yes. Did I do it? Yes. So that's all that matters. I wanted a bob, so I got the bob. And I've been enjoying it. I've been very much enjoying it. I missed my bob. Those of you who know, I am a short hair girl. Very, very happy with my haircut and I love it. Uh, it is like really slick right now because it's very oily. Um, people are like warning me about postpartum shedding. If it's gonna shed, it's gonna shed. It doesn't matter how long my hair is. Shedding is shedding. If my hair does fall out after having the baby, it's more reason for me to shave it. Hair changes are my least of my worries. Um, but even if like it's like just the sides or whatever and it just looks like patchy right here, can always cover it up with the rest of my hair. I can get bangs or something, guys. We can make it work. As far as the rest of my body goes, I feel pretty good. Like I feel like I have generally enough energy to make it through the day. There are a few times where I feel like, okay, I need to sit down. I don't have energy today. I'm a little tired, but most days, I feel fine. Like I don't really have any like crazy issues. The main thing is that I'm low risk because most of y'all know, I think I said this in the last update that I am doing a birth center. And if you don't know, birth centers do not offer medication. <laughs> I will be uh, raw dog in this one. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But um, in order to be eligible to give birth at a birth center, you have to be low risk. You cannot have any complications um, or else they will risk you out and send you to an OBGYN. Um, which in that case, I am not opposed to being transferred. If it is a medical emergency, I will absolutely go to a hospital. Um, I'm not gonna try to push this baby out despite protocol. I can't because the birth center does not want them problems. The only thing that changed this uh, trimester as far as my health goes, somewhere around the end of December, I did another blood test um, to check on my uh, just overall levels of everything, make sure I didn't have any STDs or you know um, serious issues with my blood. And it did come back that I am anemic. I was not anemic <laughs> earlier in this pregnancy. I've never been anemic. I've never had low iron. And that's common um, for people to have low iron in pregnancy, especially towards the end because the baby's getting bigger, your body's making more blood. So obviously the amount of iron that's in your blood is going to drop. So I did have to increase my iron intake, um, which I did by eating more iron rich foods, uh, more like red meat and stuff, which I'm typically not a red meat girl, but this baby likes red meat and I have not had problems digesting the red meat. So I've just been eating more red meat. And then I also have been um, taking an iron supplement. The iron supplement that I take is from my doctor, my holistic doctor. I have a, a specific brand that she orders from. And the one that I was using is a whole foods supplement. So this one that I take is much more like easily digested. So I don't have any problems with it giving me constipation. I actually don't have constipation at all right now. Um, it just takes longer for me to poop, but that's normal. I've been taking, it's been taking me longer to poop the whole pregnancy, but I'm not like straining. So like, it's not like I'm having a hard time getting the poop out. It just takes a long time for it to come down. 
to process through my body. If you didn't know, um, chlorophyll, from what my doctor was telling me, chlorophyll has a very similar, a very similar structure to hemoglobin. So when you are taking iron, it can help if you take chlorophyll along with the iron to help it absorb better into your body. I have been taking the iron supplement with chlorophyll at the same time. So I went back earlier this week, I had an appointment and I went back and they did say that my iron is up. They did a little finger prick and she was like, oh, you're good. So you do not have anemia. And I'm like, yes. So I am not at risk for postpartum hemorrhage, which low iron um, is like a sign that you may hemorrhage after you have the baby. So you don't want to have low iron. I do breathe heavy. Um, I have retired. And most of y'all know I sing in the praise team at my church. I have retired officially. And my last time singing was on New Year's Eve at New Year's Eve service. That was my last time singing officially. And then I did sing one time to fill in and I sat in a chair the whole time. I did not stand up because New Year's Eve service was girl. I could only stand up for like half the songs. And I think we sang four or five songs and I stood up for half of them. So I am no longer in the praise team. Um, and I have been staying at home and watching service online because it's too many stairs at our church and we ain't got no ramps for handicapped people. So <laughs> I do not need to be going up and down stairs um, like that. I do not go to church as much um, if I go at all. This is 35 week belly. Okay, we're officially 35 weeks, which means I only have about four weeks before my due date. This is how the belly's looking. I do have some discoloration and I don't know if y'all can tell, I got some holographic stretch marks going on here. But I have stretch marks around here. And I think I have some down here. I also have a scar because I keep bumping into things like tables and corners. And I know y'all are gonna be like, oh my God, Vicky, be careful. Listen, when your stomach protrudes out farther than the rest of your body, sometimes you make it to your destination before you realize that you did. The, the stomach is not really that heavy yet. Like it's not like weighing on my pubic bone or anything yet to where I feel like I need to like, who lift it up, you know, like use the tape. You know how some people use belly bands or tape to lift their stomach up? It's not that heavy yet. I feel like I'm getting there, but not yet. So for the most part, I'm waddling, but I'm not really like heavy, heavy. So I do get around. I try to walk as much as possible, staying active because I want to make sure that I am in shape for giving birth. Um, I'm going to start doing more exercises. I actually really enjoy doing my little aloe. There's an app. There's an aloe moves app. Um, which I will see on my TikTok. I made a whole video about it. But um, there's an Aloe Moves app and they have like prenatal workouts you can do. And so I'm gonna try to like do some light prenatal stretching workouts when I can just to get my body moving at least like 30 minutes a day. Um, I also plan on going to a chiropractor, doing acupuncture and probably going to a pelvic floor therapist. Having a baby is definitely like the biggest marathon you will ever do. It is a slow and steady thing especially if you're doing a natural birth, like your body will be contracting for at least 24 hours. So being in, in good health, being in shape is very, very important. Uh, so I'm gonna try to do that as much of that as possible, make sure the baby is in the right position, just making sure everything is aligned so that when this baby has to come out, baby just comes out good, smooth, knows how to turn. Um, we did two birth classes so far. The first birth class we did was with our doula, which I did find a doula. What I like about my doula is even though she's going to be working with me at the birth center, she does do high risk patients as well. I like having a mix of both. Uh, we did her birth class on Saturday. It was a very long class, but it was very informative. And we learned a lot about how the baby turn. Like babies are so crazy. Like they know what to do. Even though they've never done it before, they know what to do how to get out of the, the womb. Like your pelvis, like when they're going down into your pelvis and they're like pushing out, you know, with contractions, they're also twisting their body and like maneuvering their shoulders so that they miss certain bones. And like, it's just wild how they know how to do that. Like they turn, they turn their whole body during the entire process. It was a lot, I, I learned a lot. Um, and so I'm very confident in knowing what's happening. 
and I learned all the birth positions. The doula recommends that you move around a lot while you're giving birth anyway because that helps to shift baby into place. So the more movement and more positions you do while you're in labor will help get the baby out better. Um, typically when you see home births or like, you know, free births or whatever, people who are doing that, you'll see them like on all fours, on the bed, in the shower, in the tub. It's a lot of moving. Um, so people were asking me if I'm going to do a water birth and I'm like, I don't know. I actually don't know. I'll have the tub ready, but I have the option of using an entire room. Anywhere in that room, I can give birth. So I could give birth standing up. I could give birth using the Swedish bars. I can give birth on the toilet. I could give birth in the shower, on the bed, on all fours, on the floor. Like it doesn't matter. So I'm like, wherever the baby come out, that's where they become out. I'm really not focused on having it in a specific place. I'm going into this with very little expectation. And I feel like that helps me to, my mind to relax. Because if I try to mentally plan this out and have it done exactly how I would think that I would want it to be done, when something goes wrong or something changes, I would be very anxious. So I'd rather just have no, ex no expectations at all. <laughs> that's how I go into most things. And it typically works for me. So, um, but that's pretty much where I'm at right now. It's just like, preparing for labor. Um, uh, we're also working on the nursery. So we did move out of, well, I moved out of my office, which will be the baby's room. It's the only other, we only have two bedrooms in our home. And one of those was an office. We moved my stuff out of that office. So now all the baby stuff is in there. It's full of uh, gifts from the baby showers. Um, we just had our second baby shower on Sunday. If you missed it, it will be on the vlog. I'll be sure to link it here after the vlog goes up. We did have another shower here in Chicago. Well, technically in Wisconsin, but with my Chicago with Wisconsin fam. And it was so much fun. This shower, if you watch Life with the Logans, is probably going to be very nostalgic for you because it's like a lot of the people who were in earlier seasons of Life with the Logans were there. Uh, and I don't typically show a lot of people who live here in Chicago anymore on the vlogs. And it's not because I don't love them, but just because I want people to have their lives and their privacy. And I feel like too much of their life was on the internet and they didn't ask for that. And that's my bad. So I, I don't even really record people like that no more on Life with the Logans. But it was also really fun because we had a lot more time at this shower. The, sh the first shower, we didn't really have a lot of time. If I could give y'all any advice about having baby showers, do not have a two hour baby shower. You need it like three hours, if you like your people. Cause you're gonna wanna have fun, you're gonna wanna talk and mingle, and you're gonna play games. Two hours was so short. It was like we ate for one hour and played games for like 30 minutes and that was it. Um, for some people that's enough time, but for me I feel like having a three hour shower was better than two. That's just me. But um, we had a lot of fun at this shower. Um, I also liked this one a lot because I didn't have to do anything. I just showed up, which was nice because the last one I did a lot of planning for it with the planner and that still was a lot for me. So it was way, way less stressful to just have people do all of it for me without me thinking about it. So yeah, we had a good time uh, and we got more gifts. So the baby room is full of gifts right now. Um, and so next week we are going to start organizing everything, getting the nursery together, baby proofing upstairs because most of that is our office. So we're gonna have to baby proof that whole office because uh, it's so many cords. It's literally a fire hazard. Cam moved his desk out. He moved his desk and his podcast equipment. Cam is starting his own podcast. It's called Friday Morning Devotional. So um, if you guys wanted to watch the Friday Morning Devo, um, podcast you can that's what he's been focused on lately which is why we haven't been doing everything as we as much because um, he's more so focused on doing his devotional content which is cool so we're probably not gonna do the podcast in the house anymore which means I get to move my makeup stuff back into the area that it was in when I was like heavily doing YouTube videos on here long story short we're nesting um, I have reached the point where I can no longer clean the house by myself as much as I would love to get up and clean every single thing every hour of the day because I am like, I just need to clean stuff. I want everything to be just clean all the time because if there's too much stuff around, I get overwhelmed. I did recently hire cleaners to come every two weeks. So now I have a cleaning crew come and clean the house for me, deep clean the house for me because I'm not, I'm not bending over and cleaning no more toilets, bro. I can't do it. I, I'm just, I'm out, of, I'm out of commission. And then we got to get some baby furniture. Like I need to get a crib and I don't need to get a crib right away, 
but we really need a dresser and a rocking chair so that's the two things that are left that i gotta get most everything else on our registry though has been purchased like the stuff that we really needed that's good we don't really need anything right now since the last update here are some of the symptoms that i've been feeling we'll go through these really quickly and then we'll be done i'll give y'all a little belly update and y'all can see the belly and then i'll be out of here because i gotta go i gotta be on a podcast tonight feel in the blank podcast that is ayana from love is blind and her friend kayla so i'm gonna go there tonight to be on their podcast so be sure to check that out if you guys wanted to see me on their podcast if you did not also if you do not know i did make a pregnancy x <laughs> all my icks all the things i don't like about pregnancy i made a whole video about that and i made a pregnancy benefits video as well because some people were like please say something nice about your pregnancy you just keep saying negative things and i'm like well pregnancy is not fun i don't know why y'all thought this was fun but anyways um i gave both my icks and my benefits on tiktok so if you wanted to see my icks and everything i don't like about pregnancy most of that is on there but i'm going to go through some of the symptoms here that have changed since and things that have happened since the last time I gave you an update. I, I will say that my symptoms in the third trimester are not nearly as bad. People were saying that the third trimester is as bad as the first one. What's crazy is my symptoms have been so mild during this trimester that I actually got some of my like juice back. Like I wanna get dressed up. That's why I cut my hair. I'm like, I wanna like wear cute outfits. I've been wanting to shop like for the last three weeks, which is wild to me because this whole pregnancy, I have been not wanting to shop and not wanting to look cute. I literally just bought some coats from Zara on sale. Um, maybe it's all the sales. I don't know, but I just want to look cute, girl. I just wanted to wear outfits. Okay, I bought some clothes. I bought some maternity leggings so that I could like wear this blazer that I wanted to get. I bought a suit. I want to wear some cute fits and go out to eat and have fun. But most of my symptoms have not been that bad. So I've been feeling more like me in the third trimester than any other trimester, which is crazy because I thought typically by now, you just done lost yourself completely, but it's the opposite. Like the first trimester and the second trimester, I don't know who I was, but now I'm like, okay, I got this. Like, I'm good, let's go. Like, I wanna hang out, I wanna go places, I wanna do things, and I can't go nowhere. I can barely walk, I can barely breathe half the time. So I really don't need to be going nowhere, but I be feeling like I want to. So the only thing that's a little bit more painful or like just not as comfortable this time around than any of the other trimesters is sleeping i'm really having a hard time sleeping through the night um and it's not because like i just be awake for no reason it's more so like i'm when i have to pee and get up it's so uncomfortable trying to get up and i'm trying to like adjust and figure out which angles are best sometimes i need to be elevated a bit more being a little bit more elevated like at this angle like as at least the top half of my body helps my stomach to not be so sunken in and um sleeping on my left side has been better than sleeping on my right because if you sleep on your right side you're more prone to acid reflux so i would wake up more nauseous if i slept on the right side than if i slept on the left so i've been trying to sleep more on the left side more elevated um, but either way trying to like get out of bed like trying to turn this hard heavy belly all the way over just to slide out of bed has been really difficult so that's something that i just don't really like the acid reflux is better when i don't sleep on my right side i have been getting more braxton hicks actually i've been getting braxton hicks very consistently through this pregnancy i started getting braxton hicks around week 20. really haven't stopped getting them since then they're more so just like and they'll be like it'll just be a hard tightening it'll feel like i'm doing a crunch um and then it'll just go away they're not terrible they don't hurt i can talk through them i can't really breathe when they happen but they're not like real contractions i know they're not real contractions because they're not painful i have been very forgetful if you try to zoom call me for any reason i'm going to forget your zoom call and i want everybody to know this because like i'll be feeling bad but i i really don't i really don't remember y'all zoom calls i'm so sorry uh i have almost burned the house down making bacon i think i told y'all that story when i almost burnt the house down um <laughs> because i forgot that i was making bacon there have been so many things i've forgotten to do and i really be feeling bad for people like y'all i'm so sorry but i just be forgetting everything i'm very forgetful mostly this month in january um since the new year started i've noticed third trimester has taken away my vision every now and then my eyes get blurry and the midwives said that's normal. They said it's okay as long as I'm not seeing black spots or my peripheral vision is not blocked or I can't see out of my peripherals, that's a bad sign. But other than that, if I have blurred vision, it's that's normal. 
um, and it's nothing to be alarmed about. But I was really wearing glasses. Like I was putting on my computer glasses. Like, okay, I cannot see today. Why is my eyes blurry? Uh, I have 20-20 vision. This is not supposed to happen to me. It's giving astigmatism. I also have like almost carpal tunnel. Like when I wake up in the morning, my hands, my fingers are cramped to where like if I try to do this, it hurts. It's not like where I can't move my fingers at all. It's just like this hurts in the morning. Right now it feels fine. Like I feel fine throughout the day, but just in the morning when I wake up. And she said, the midwife said that that was from swelling. And she was like, it'll go away after pregnancy. And I'm like, girl, like... This baby done took my vision. This baby done made me forget everything. And now my fingers don't work. Like, are you kidding me? Also, I noticed a couple of times, not every, it's not frequent at all. It's like maybe once or twice I've had dizzy spells, like vertigo. Um, and basically what that ha what happens is like, I'll be standing up and I'll be like, oh, I need to sit down immediately. Like I need to sit down. Um, and I will notice that like, once I sit down, I'm seeing stars and like the room is spinning. That's happened to me maybe twice. Um, one time it happened in the shower where I had to literally sit down in the shower and watch my body sitting down. And then another time it happened while I was just walking around the house and I felt like I needed to sit down immediately. And I sat down and I was just like out of breath. It felt like I was gonna pass out and I've never felt that before so that was really crazy. During second trimester I felt baby moving a lot. Third trimester baby is still moving a lot and the kicks are definitely bigger. I can tell where baby's at by how the movement is but the movement is not as frequent. So like, I can tell baby is like sleeping certain times of the day and then waking up and like doing rumbles and kicks and stuff. When I'm hungry, baby kicks a lot. When I'm walking around the house doing something, the baby is kicking a lot, moving around a lot, especially when I'm more active. The more active I am, the more baby moves. So that's cool. Cause typically when I'm sleeping, I don't really feel baby moving at all. And Cam said, yeah, you don't notice that you're like, getting kicked and punched and baby's rolling over and i'm like no i'll be knocked out so he's always so shocked that i can't feel that um it's not that i can't feel it it's just i don't be it don't be waking me up but baby's definitely kicking a lot i noticed more kicks up here so baby's feet are up here the back is here and then the head is down we're already in the position that we need to be in which is really really good i don't have to try to turn baby because we're breached so and i do get punched in the bladder a lot uh, which makes me have to go pee. But other than that, we're doing great. Uh, the baby, I also have noticed, has been hiccuping more. And I know the baby's lungs and back is on this side because the hiccuping is, I feel it more on this side. Um, oh, you're moving. What's up? Probably like once or twice a day, I'll feel hiccuping. And it'll just be like little doop, 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 doop. And it just, it's a little hiccup. And you can see it moving. You can see my stomach moving. That is pretty much all the symptoms that have changed. I've just been trying to make sure that I take my supplements, drink enough water. Drinking enough water has been the hardest thing. I have the hardest time drinking enough water. I bought a whole Stanley cup. And I know TikTok has been telling y'all not to buy Stanley cups because it's a scam, like you don't need to buy them. I love my Stanley cup. I don't care what nobody say. I don't need five or six of them, but I do love my Stanley cup. One, because it has a handle. Two, because it has this part that fits into cup holders, which I had an iron flask. I still have an iron flask. Um, and the iron flask does not fit in cup holders. So I like this one a little bit better. And um, it's stainless steel on the inside, so it keeps stuff cool and also is easy to clean. Uh, so I love my Stanley. And I've been really refilling it, just trying to drink enough water, get enough electrolytes throughout the day. And I also have been trying to eat enough. I eat a lot though. I really haven't had problems eating. Um, nothing, no new cravings. Um, not craving anything crazy none, none of my cravings have changed none of my diet has changed really just eating whatever i feel like eating and whatever's convenient for me at the moment um i don't have any cravings at all i actually wish i did have cravings because it would be easier for me to find things to eat <laughs> i am preparing for postpartum so i'm trying to figure out what foods i'm going to eat and what i am going to have people make me because i do need somebody to cook for me after i have this baby because i'm not gonna be cooking I'm not, but I need some food. I'm gonna need a lot of it, especially because I'm gonna try to breastfeed. Just getting ready to have this baby, y'all. I'll probably try to do another update before I have the baby. I'll probably come back around 39 weeks if I can. We'll see, not sure. Um, just to give y'all a final update, but as, as of right now, I feel really good. Do I love pregnancy? That is like the one thing that people like really wanna know. They're like, how are you liking it? How are you feeling? Emotionally, I have been the same pretty much this whole pregnancy. Like I have not had emotional up and downs like that. Um, I have not been an emotional wreck. I have not been crying at all. Cam has cried more than I have during this pregnancy. I have not been super emotional. I've been mean 
I will fight you and I'll probably say something that you don't want to hear. I might say something out of pocket. Don't really have a filter right now. I'm not really like a super, super nice sugarcoat kind of person, but I'm hoping that I'm not mean like this for the rest of my life because I, I feel like I'm really mean. I've been getting on Cam's nerves a lot because I'm just like, you need to do this. You need to do that. Are you gonna move this? Where's this going? Um, the only time I really felt emotional is when we moved my desk out of my office and then Cam moved his desk out of the house and moved it to the church. And I was like, <laughs> I feel like we broke up. But it's because I told him to because I wanted to start getting things together. And then now I'm like, oh my God, I'm sad. You're not here no more. He is still here, but he doesn't work in the house anymore, which is like, oh. we just got used to us working together and now I kicked you out and then now I'm sad about it. Um, it's not really me though. It's the baby kicking him out. The baby kicked him out, not me. It's just, I've only been emotional about those two things, but lately I have not been super emotional. Like I feel like when I was having a period, like throughout the month, I would feel all different types of emotions. But right now I don't feel anything. Like I've really just been chill. People are like asking me if I'm excited or nervous. No, I'm not really nervous, but I'm also not really excited. I'm just kind of like, whatever happens happens I'm not really going into it with a lot of expectation we finna have a baby and it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that because i've never had a baby before so i don't really know what to be excited about like what am i excited about pushing out a baby you you want me to be excited about pushing out a baby i'm like no oh, well when you see the baby you're gonna be yeah when i see the baby i'm gonna feel something then but right now i don't feel that because i haven't seen the baby yet i, I can't feel something i haven't experienced i don't know how to explain it but i just I don't know how to be excited for something that I've never done before and that I've never experienced before because I don't know what I'm getting excited about. What part of that is gonna really like hit me. I know some people who have babies, they're like, I saw that baby and I was like, whose baby is this? This is my baby? It takes me time to process things anyway. Like I don't process things right in the moment ever. I feel like when I see the baby, I'm not gonna be like, oh my gosh. You know, I'm gonna be like, what is this? Cause that's me with everything else, like when I'm surprised or shocked and I don't want people to get their hopes up about me crying and stuff because I'm just like, that never happens. It's probably gonna take me some time to process everything happening. So I'm not sure if I like the baby in my stomach or out of my stomach better yet, I'm not sure. Pregnancy is a beautiful thing, it's amazing, but it's not my favorite thing in the world. Um, and it's not because I just hate it. I don't hate being pregnant. But I don't like it either. It's not like I just really enjoy this and would love to do it again 17 times, no. Uh, I would very much like a break after this. Um, I would like my body back. <laughs> I would like to feel normal for at least a little bit before I have another one. So that's where I'm at. Um, and that's how I'm feeling. And that's all I got. I don't think I have anything else to say. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Um, if you guys want the link to anything that I'm wearing, the Stanley Cup, any of my faves that I may have talked about in this video. All of my mom favorites, all the things that I've been using and loving for this pregnancy are all in my Amazon store. So you can check that out. I may do like a nursery tour once I finish the nursery and or like a haul from like, not a haul, but just like showing you guys what I got from the registry. I gotta go so that I'm not late to this podcast and I will talk to you guys later. Hopefully before this baby comes out. If not, cheers to baby Logan. And then y'all get to find out what the sex of the baby is because I definitely have not shared that. If you have guesses, it's pretty much 50-50. I feel like most people are like, it's a girl. And then there's other people who are like, it's a boy. I've gotten girl more than I've gotten boy. So if you want to guess in the comments, go ahead. I don't care. I'm not telling though and I'm not confirming whether or not you're right, but you guys can put your ballot in for which one you think it is and we gonna see. All right, y'all. Let me go. I'll see y'all later. Say bye.